Okay, hi everybody. So uh, thank you for uh, being here. Uh, we had a busy week in the MIP Alliance, and uh, now uh, we're happy to present also about activities that we do with display. So this is, as Matt said, this is a joint presentation with ARM and Synopsys, just to, uh, I guess, discuss what what is being done in the latest and greatest uh, displays, and how uh, solutions can be developed that really solve the customer problem. So in the agenda today, what we're going to do, uh, we will be talking about the, the demand that we are starting to see in uh, higher bandwidth for higher resolution uh, displays. We will then introduce the ARM Mali CITES display processor, the fundamental, how it works, uh, the benefits of the new uh, architecture. We'll then move on and explain how the connectivity between what the, uh, the ARM processor uh, outputs to the display subsystem that includes the uh, DSI uh, and uh, MIPI-5 uh, uh, conne uh, connection really uh, facilitates the, the entire uh, subsystem. And at the end, I was just going to wrap it up and saying what Synopsys and ARM can do uh, to assist you. We also have uh, a representative from ARM here, uh, Ravi, is here in the first row. So at the end, of course, there will be questions about ARM. Uh, please direct it to him. If a question about Synopsys stuff, of course, I'll be happy to, uh, to handle. All right, so we'll start with the first um, uh, uh, in, uh, introduction slide. We're seeing more and more um, higher bandwidth uh, demand in embedded displays. Uh, of course, the leading uh, application is the mobile uh, terminal, which requires more powerful GPUs. And we see higher resolution uh, cameras that capturing higher resolution images coming into the mobile display, uh, into the mobile terminal. And um, uh, we're also seeing uh, really content that is coming uh, to, uh, uh, to the phone itself. And that really requires um, uh, to, to that to be displayed um, in, a, in, a, in a best manner on, on the display itself. So higher visual quality is we all need as a consumer. Second uh, market that we see uh, evolving demand is AR, VR, specifically virtual reality um, applications. Uh, what uh, we are seeing is that uh, display are not only requiring higher resolution, but also higher refresh rates, and actually to overcome some uh, artifacts that, um, that come with really looking into the display in a, a close, uh, close proximity to the eye. So there are a lot of challenges over there that needs to be overcome, not just with a higher resolution, but also with a higher frame rate. And in the automotive uh, domain, we are seeing more and more uh, uh, displays that are coming there, infotainment, uh, dashboard uh, is being replaced by uh, display uh, uh, capabilities. And there are also new applications where displays are coming in automotive, such as mirrorless uh, system. Uh, so those kind of displays are somewhat uh, uh, customized for the automotive market but all of them provide high resolution and a lot of bandwidth that is also need to be uh, supported. So all of this kind of application is really driving the need in uh, having a complete, uh, let's say, subsystem for display that can be accommodated. So very quickly, again, I'm not the ARM expert here, but uh, just to introduce to you uh, the growing importance of display uh, processing unit in the display pipeline. If you can look at the Log diagram on the right, you can see the orange um, uh, uh, portion of it uh, really highlights the Mali uh, Citus uh, processor, that's the display processor, and it's the last stage in the application processor uh, 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 complex system. And that's really what, what it does, is really it outputs the display um, uh, information to the external world, and that's really where it connects to uh, MIPI DSI, for example, is one of the display uh, uh, interfaces. The display really, uh, display really processor really uh, uh, allows you really to send and transmit those pixels and the right timing information that is associated with the MIPI DSI. Uh, ARM uh, Mali display uh, really is feature rich, so it has all this kind of capabilities such as composing, scaling, rotation, gamma correction, color management. We're going to go over some of them later. Um, it really supports low power, uh, real-time uh, performance in a single pass, really saving cycles, allowing you to really process the image from one end to the, uh, to the other and really allowing you to, uh, to transmit that effectively to the, to the other side. 
supports uh, a lot of uh, software um, uh, uh, DDK and, K and KMS. Also, uh, it is included in the uh, ARM Mali uh, multimedia suite. And last, it supports uh, multiple display outputs. Over here, since this is uh, MIPI DevCon, we will highlight the usage of ARM Mali with uh, MIPI DSi, but it supports other uh, interfaces too. Uh, the progression of the ARM Mali, uh, just uh, very quickly, we'll go over that. Multiple generations were uh, really were driven by um, the display resolution itself from 1080p, which was the first um, uh, designation of uh, ARM Mali, and now going more into a 4K capabilities. 4K 120 frames per second is really what ARM Mali cities can, can support. It has quad scaling and more layers can be supported. Uh, power and quality optimization uh, for a variety of panel and system. We'll touch on, on that. And composition for new uh, UHD content such as HDR10. Uh, this is uh, in high level the bl block diagram of the ARM Mali Citus uh, architecture. Uh, I will not go over all of that in details, but there are effectively two, um, uh, two engines there that uh, really allow a layer processing unit Composition, composition unit and display output. So we have uh, two units there that are independent that allows you to do more processing and more effectively. You can effectively uh, reduce the processing uh, time. You can reduce the, the power consumption associated with uh, processing the two images by splitting the image into two and having lower clock rate. So since uh, most of the applications we touched about are either mobile or uh, power sensitive, these kind of capabilities are very important to them. Um, so we'll touch on that later. Uh, this is an example of um, uh, the, the composition <coughs> capabilities uh, in, uh, in a mobile terminal. Uh, so uh, uh, ARM uh, Mali uh, uh, Citus really supports uh, multi-window sessions in the Android. So um, up to eight composition layers uh, can uh, be uh, accommodated. So in the image itself that you can actually see on the display itself. You have multiple compositions. So for example, uh, application one and two pop-up window, status pull, uh, uh, pull down and navigation. So we have multiple composition for a single uh, display that you actually see. And all of these needs to be processed separately, but displayed together. So having this capability is really supported by the, the ARM uh, Mali uh, solution. The CITUS uh, processor supports up to eight composition layers that can be done, simultaneous layer and pixel alpha blending. So all these kind of capabilities are, are possible. Uh, but going into the use cases that is more relevant to the MIPI Alliance is really those capabilities that involve really the, uh, beyond the processing itself. So the first one is really uh, ability to split, uh, uh, to, to split the image into a uh, uh, different configuration actually to allow a more effective and more optimized uh, downscaling capabilities. So for example, if you have a 4K uh, image and you need to process that, it can be actually split into two halves as this image really implies on the left. So you have a 4K uh, uh, composition layer, uh, zero, and it's to be split into two halves so it's horizontally being broken down uh, and then added to additional composition layers. As you can see there, there's a 2K uh, composition which is, uh, Chromions, and you have a single layer for status bar, for example, or another pop-up uh, window. All of these compositions are being uh, uh, processed at the same time with a reduced uh, clock rate to uh, to really uh, add it up to the to the end result of uh, at the end uh, that you, that you see over here. So this is a single pass, allowing you to put all this multiple composition, but uh, for the 4K. Uh, split, you can actually have, uh, have it split into two to save you power. Uh, really a use case that is more um, uh, relevant to uh, virtual reality, for example, is the fact that you can do a side-by-side -side processing. So when you have, for example, a 4K uh, display, let's say um, uh, 120 frames per second, it can actually split into two halves. There's some kind of uh, overlap between the two halves to allow a better processing. Uh, but you effectively can split it to two halves, and as I showed you before, you have two engines uh, that can allow you to do this parallel processing at the same time and deliver that result to two uh, display outputs 
uh, and then deliver that to two DDICs in the display panel. Uh, very quickly on the performance and area comparison, so the latest uh, Molly, uh, R Molly Cetus really allows you to do more uh, with less, so additional functionality uh, for like eight uh, composition layer side-by-side -side, uh, processing, scaling split, and uh, uh, this kind of uh, high-end features are all included in the new uh, uh, Molly uh, uh, processor. And as you can see, the die area has increased only by very little. And but uh, the latency uh, tolerance is actually much, much better. Okay, so uh, focusing more on the display output unit. So the display output unit is really the last stage uh, in the display uh, processor unit itself. What it does is from the composition uh, unit layer, it actually uh, provides the entire composed uh, the display image that needs to be displayed. And uh, that's really uh, really al allows that to be transmitted to the other side, either using link zero or both link zero and link one. In this example, which I will take forward in the next slide, is you really have one image that is being split into two and having this dual processing done side by side, but uh, effectively you're using two links as the output of the ARM MALI processor. So we have an option to do a single output uh, or, 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 or two links as an output. So when, when we look at the single, at the single uh, link uh, output, so this one is an example how today's premium smartphone is, is using this kind of subsystem. So I'm taking it actually in a higher level, and I'm showing here the Mali Citus that I already introduced to you. But uh, in, in this example, we're only talking about a single link going out from the Mali Citus into the display subsystem, which is the MIPI uh, DSI. And in this example, we are using a WQHD uh, um, uh, resolution, uh, 60 hertz and 24 bits per pixel. So it's a single stream with a total bandwidth of about 6.3 gigabit per second. That is transmitted after processing with all the composition that we talked about to the display subsystem. That uh, includes um, uh, MIPI DSI and MIPI DeFi in this example. We also added here a VESA DSC, that's really a, a compression engine that is a collaboration between Lance and, and VESA, and that allows uh, to do uh, visually lossless compression. In this example, and that's in step two, we take the 6.3 gig and we actually compress it by two, and that gets us to about 3.16 gig. That is actually the output of the VESA DSC into, uh, VESA DSC encoder into the, the MIPI DSI uh, uh, host or transmitter controller. And that's really where the packetizing and the additional protocol there is being uh, 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 applied to match the MIPI DSI protocol and then transmit it to the MIPI DeFi to uh, transmit that over the number of lanes that are needed. And that's in the third step. So the third step is really taking the 3.16 gig of data, encapsulating it to the DSI packets and, uh, and, and uh, uh, tr uh, transmitting all of that using, in this example, using uh, four data lanes, uh, each on the, uh, under one gigabit per second to achieve uh, the overall need uh, in the premium smartphone. Uh, what we are seeing in the future premium smartphone, but it's also applicable for AR, VR kind of application, very similar example to what I, sh I, I showed you in the premium smartphone, but in, in this example, the application is typically talking about 4K or plus, more than that. And, and, and that's really uh, what, what this kind of solution can give you and uh, implement that uh, fairly easily. So in step one, we are talking about the 4K display in 90 hertz and 30 bits per pixel. A single stream of that is, goes up to 26.6 gig. Uh, as we talked about, the Mali Citus can, has the capability to split that to two links. So in, 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 in that case, each link really provides you 13.3 gig. And that goes to uh, what we call dual DSI link. And uh, each link is, uh, um, uh, operates uh, individually. And in the, sec in the third step, effectively, we're, in this example, we're showing VESA DSC encoding, which goes um, and compresses the, 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 tr the transmitted data by three. So, and that really gives us about 4.4 .4 gig. 
and, uh, and then transmit it to the DSI protocol, encapsulate it in DSI packets, does exactly what the DSI uh, spec is, uh, um, tells it to do. And using DeFi at 1.5 gigabit per lane, you can actually implement that using four data lines. There are other things that you can do, but this is really the stream that implementers are going in order to implement that and transmit two separate links or two halves of the, of the image to the, to the DDIC. We are also showing in this example the DDIC and the display module on the right-hand side. So each DDIC receives that data and uh, needs to have this DSI receiver functionality and uh, VESA uh, DSC decoder to uh, decompress the, the received stream. But there's also a need to have some kind of synchronization between the two DDIC. So uh, a lot of uh, display vendors are actually implemented this kind of use case, and this is being uh, used uh, in, in system. That really shows you a way, one way to implement a 4K display uh, with uh, 90 hertz uh, frames per second. So we talked about VESA DSC, but I should have really introduced that first. Uh, but <laughs> Uh, VESA is an organization that defines a display port, not, not only, but also display port. And there's a collaboration between MIPI Alliance and VESA DSC. So MIPI DSI protocol, as you probably know, references VESA DSC as uh, a, a protocol that you can use to compress or decompress the, the traffic. And uh, on the right-hand side, this is a block diagram, how the application processor or the SOC can uh, actually uh, connect. So from the DPU, you have the... Uh, you have the image, the raw image that itself, you can actually using uh, the VESA DSC can encode that, reduce the traffic, transmit that to the DSI host controller, to the MIPD file, to the other side uh, on the display side. So multiple features, but I don't have time to go over that for VESA DSC, but the main thing is that it's a visually lossless uh, algorithm, meaning that um, uh, the, for the user looking at it, uh, you cannot really find the differences between a compressed, uh, using VESA DSC, a compressed uh, display um, or non-compressed one. Uh, and that capability, adding the DSI, DSC capability to DSI and allows <coughs> you to really reduce the traffic, reduce the power, reuse the same hardware that you have. So you don't need to change, the, for example, the DeFi that you have. You don't need to redesign it to... Uh, support uh, higher bandwidth. You can actually reuse the majority of the functionality and just add this kind of capability to, uh, to achieve that. So you can, you can actually meet those high resolution in the table that shows you, depending on the DeFi that you're actually using. Sorry. Uh, it depends on the DeFi speed that you're using. We're showing here two examples. Of course, you have more, more DeFi capability. We're just showing here two examples, DeFi at 1.5 gig or DeFi 2.5 gig, and each one you have no compression. If you really uh, do not want to really uh, uh, operate in, in that mode, which is, which is possible, so it's more raw, or you have by two or by three compression. So all of this really allowing you to achieve the high resolution that is required by the applications we talked about in a more efficient way. Okay, I wanna go over, uh, well, before that, <laughs> just wanna touch on the synopsis, I'm a synopsis also. <laughs> to put my hat on. So Synopsys supports uh, the DSI host controller that integrates both the DSI transmit capabilities compliant to uh, MIPI DSI spec, but also integrates uh, VESA DSC uh, encoder functionality. This can be bypassed, but it can really allow you to do compression or non-compression and achieve what we just uh, were talking about. The big message here is that it's already pre-integrated, so easier for the designers to use such an IP like that connected to the ARM MALI uh, processor and, to, uh, deco uh, and uh, to encode the data. Supports all the use cases we talked about, uh, so, but effectively drastically reducing the time to market uh, that you use. So integrating the MIPI DSI with VESA DSC, uh, this is just a um, dual DSI use case that is still used in the market to implement that, but no compression is being done. And we're showing here, uh, a heavy implementation that requires four, uh, sorry, two individual ports for DSI with DeFi, four data lanes and one clock for each one of them. The same amount of resources are required on the display side and a lot of memory is required on the frame buffer because there's a lot of uh, traffic that is being transmitted. So it needs to be processed or stored on the display 
driver side. What, uh, um, what uh, adding a DSI, uh, sorry, adding DSC uh, to the whole system, really what it does, it could remove the complete second link. So in this example, we're actually showing that you can actually, by compressing it by two, you effectively uh, allow you to use a single DSI link and transmit that data to the other side. And you are effectively removing um, a lot of overhead that could be seen in the system. Secondly, you are also removing SDRAM. So you're also moving the memory resources, you're moving cost from the system too, just by adding this kind of uh, DSC compression to the system. So overall, from a, we'll say, heavier implementation of a dual link, no compression, you could save power, area, and cost with scalable architecture. You can still have support for, this, for the second port. Yeah, it, it, it is possible, so it's up to the system itself to decide whether you want to use compression, and over here it's the single port, or you do not want to use uh, compression. So w without DSC, you effectively can still do that and get the, uh, uh, the resolution that you want. But in general, MEPI Alliance implementation allowing you to reduce power, uh, reduce the cost in the system, and uh, uh, really allowing you to implement really what you need in the application. Also wanted to mention additional uh, side benefits that uh, implementing this kind of subsystem uh, allows you to do. So in, in this example, we're showing here um, uh, a certain resolution at 60 frames per second. I'm going to go over that. I think it's WQHD. Uh, there's about 7 gig that is, needs to be transmitted from the host side to the device side. Uh, so with the compression itself, so instead of 7 gig, you're actually using a by 2 compression. And you now need to transmit uh, less than 4 gig uh, from the host side to the device side. Now, there are some challenging um, uh, channels in the market. So some, say, lower end phones or um, some, say, mainstream phones do not have the luxury to use uh, PCBs that are really more expensive. They have um, uh, some routing issues and they have some, some limitations that cannot you cannot achieve, let's say, 2.5 gig, for example. But you can easily achieve a 1 gig. So without a lot of complication, a lot of adding cost to the PCB, using this kind of technology gets you to transmit data below 1 gig per lane. So using that technology over here, you're actually using four lanes. You can actually uh, transmit about 1, one gig. And this, this channel is chip on glass. It's just one example. But it doesn't need to be uh, that one only. So we have flex and we have additional ones. Another example is that actually by reducing the traffic with, uh, with a compression, you can uh, transmit using less pin. So yeah, there's some applications that are really pin limited or um, really you cannot route too many pins or you want to save on the packaging cost. There are multiple applications and multiple use cases. You could effectively reduce the traffic by three, the seven gig that we showed you before can be reduced uh, to 2.3 and actually being transmitted on a single data lane. So four wires to transmit less than 2.5 gig using D5.1.2. But we, we see customers using all these kind of scenarios, very flexible implementation using uh, MIPI protocols. Okay, we do have uh, about six minutes, but go over that. So what, so what I showed you before is the ARM CITES uh, processor has a lot of capabilities in processing um, uh, uh, this display and really layering the composition, uh, all of that in order to support the latest requirements in mobile, uh, uh, in the mobile market, in the automotive market, and VR markets mostly, where high resolution is required, higher refresh rate is required, and uh, this kind of capability is allowing you to achieve all of that, but also in a very effective way reducing the power and really using the resources, the SOC resources in the wisest way. But um, what, what we have learned that uh, assisting our customers is very important, not just having the technology available, but actually making sure it works in the scenarios or in the use cases we were talking about. Uh, and Synopsys has solutions for DSI. We have the controllers, we have the FIs, we have uh, multiple solutions. But, uh, ARM provides uh, this uh, display processor Unix, and Synopsys provides the DSi uh, IP. And we decided that in the benefit of the industry, we would, it will be better that we will collaborate and we'll provide uh, this kind of uh, guidelines and uh, documentation.
for customers who want to implement a complete display subsystem from the processor to the other side and provide this kind of guidelines. So provide support for video mode, the DSI video mode, dual link, <coughs> uh, command mode, um, different kind of operations. So we'll talk about pixel, uh, pixel uh, data transfer in DSI command mode for both single and dual link, for example, dynamic resolution change, partial update, um, power control, and of course, the, what we talked about in terms of DSC encoding. All of these kind of capabilities are proven using the ARM uh, MALI uh, implementation with the Synopsys IP. And this is just a diagram that uh, we put out together, but um, it just shows the connectivity. I think it's uh, uh, using uh, a DPI uh, interface. So this kind of information is readily available. And uh, there are many ARM uh, customers, there are many Synopsys customers, so putting those forces together will enable those applications to have faster uh, uh, time to market. Um, so yeah, so this is really more of a block diagram. So we effectively both ARM and Synopsys work together to ensure a complete and optimized end-to-end uh, -end display solution uh, in the documentation that we put together. Uh, we uh, have the popular use cases. We went uh, and talked about that, the dual, dual link and a single link for uh, premium phones, for VR, for example. And we effectively provide guidance how to uh, transmit and how to connect the two solutions all together. So this kind of application note, it's a joint application note that we are sharing uh, with our customers. Uh, so um, effectively, you can reach out to ARM. You can reach out to Synopsys, and we provide this kind of integration guidelines uh, to assist you. Uh, I think the block diagram over here is showing uh, uh, application processor, and this is really the capabilities of both Synopsys uh, and, and, and ARM. So ARM is on the blue side, of course, and that's the ARM uh, Mali processor. But these are the solutions that are effectively available from ARM and Synopsys all together. Purple is Synopsys, and ARM is blue. And uh, really what it, we show you here is that, yeah, we're focusing here on uh, MIPI-DSI, but there's some additional display technology. So we don't want to, uh, to neglect talking about that. When you implement your SOC, uh, most likely you will not do only MIPI-DSI for the, for the internal display. You may want to do HDMI, for example, for the external display. And uh, this kind of capabilities are also available from, from these two uh, companies. Um, so effectively, that's it. We have two more minutes. So any questions? Yes. So in the, in, in DSC, you're talking about uh, uh, video compression, right? So is it working on line basis or a tile basis or what is the block size? Yeah. So uh, the DSC engine is working on a slice basis. Uh, so very similar to, well, you can say line, but it's not exactly that. It's the definition of slices. Because if it is a slice, it would be a challenge because ARM Mali engine is a, uh, so to say, a raster scan. That means it just pumps out pixel, pixel after pixel, right? So now you're just connecting that to, let's say, DSC compression engine, right? Uh, if the DSC compression engine needs a two-dimensional array of the image, which is a slice, then how would we get that uh, slice from Mali Engine? How would you get the slice what? Uh, how would you get the slice from Mali Engine? Because Mali Engine is sending each line after line data. Each line has got so many pixels, right? Uh -huh. It's a RASA scan, basically. That's what you're getting to uh, DSC compression engine. So how would the DSC compression engine will work with that? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can answer that <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah, I probably need to include uh, the architect here to explain that in a better way. Oh, sure. We may be actually be running up. Okay. Sorry, we we may be uh, running a little bit behind schedule. So, so uh, thank you very much, oh, Hezzy. Thank you. And you, you'll be available out outside, yes. right? If there's any yeah. follow-on questions. Probably talk about that now. And uh, we also have uh, Ravi here for um, a question about ARM stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. No problem.